We're on chapter 3 of this great book, Adab Surah a book that many people all over the world for many centuries have read this book. How many, how many, how many a heart has been awoken after reading this book? How many people, how many people's lives have been changed after reading this book? Many, many people. Okay, this book is written by a man. Imam Abdullah ibn Ayyub al-Haddad who lived several hundred years ago and he was a man whose heart was alive spiritual Iman Imam Abdullah ibn Ayyub al-Haddad when he used to pray they said once in one of his prayers he said Allahu Akbar and the wall in front of him split open The wall in front of the split. He said, oh, oh I mean, this is not true. This is superstition. This is far. Uh, this is far-fetched. This is ba'id. Nah, what we say is that you are ba'id. You are ba'id. You are far from understanding the reality of this religion. Because, because you don't have an understanding of these type of things, because you, when you say Allah Akbar, it doesn't mean anything to you, nothing happens. But come, the Mahdi, when the Mahdi comes, his army will say, Allahu Akbar, what will happen? The walls of Constantinople will split and crumble. Uh, why? Because the hearts are there. And when they say, Allahu Akbar, they mean it. Allah is the greatest. Allah is the greatest. Now how many times? Five times a day, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. We don't mean, we don't understand. When we say, Allahu Akbar, in our hearts, Allah is not Akbar. Allah is not the greatest. Really, really, when we think about it, yeah? In the heart, is the dunya is greater. My wife is greater. My child is greater. My stomach is greater. My food is greater. Everything is greater other than Allah. And that's why we don't benefit in our salah. We don't benefit in our salah. We don't look at the awliya. Some of the awliya, the man is true. And the problem of this age is that people who are not connected to this tradition yeah. Don't taste this. You will never know this. And when you come across it, it's alien. Why? Because their practice, their practice is alien to the reality of this faith. <laughs> those who know, love, know. And those who don't know, don't know. So this is a, a man whose heart is alive. And if you come to this class and you read this book with a heart that wants to be alive, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open your heart. And bring your heart and my heart alive, inshallah. Mm -hmm. So, chapter 3. Imam Abdullah ibn Ayyub al-Haddad says, Guarding the heart against insinuations, waswas, whispers, ailments, khawati, and ill thinking. Subhanallah. He begins, a murid, a, a disciple, a murid. And the one who is seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should strive to guard his heart against wiswas, whispers, insinuations, ailments, and bad thoughts. He should guard its gate by constant vigilance and prevent these things from entering. Imam Abdullah ibn Ali al Haddad <laughs> says that you should guard the gates to your heart. What are the gates to your heart? Your eyes. You know, the gates. What your eyes see, go to your heart, direct. And he's going to explain now how that works. With God, you should make sure your eyes don't look at wrong things. Protect it. It's the gates. Once they enter, if you look at something, even your ears, they're gates as well. Looking at something wrong, listening to something wrong, these are gates. And whatever you look at that's wrong, or whatever you, if you listen to something that's wrong, it goes straight to the heart. Very dangerous. <clears throat> if it gets to the heart, what happens? They will ruin it, they will ruin your heart, and it becomes difficult to remove them, expel them. How many of you think, has somebody seen something, maybe on TV, something, looked at something, haram, and that picture now, that vision is in your heart. 
Or how many a bad word someone has said, backbiting. Da, 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 da. So and so there, so and so small, so and so this. And you just happen to listen by accident. And now, of course, oh, so and so is no good. And because you listened once, that's in your heart. And now it takes, and now every time you look at that person, you're remembering what he said. You just happen to walk past, but because you're in head, that's in your heart. It takes a long time. Now you have to try and remove it, you have to fight, you have to do mujahida, struggle against yourself to remove this from your heart. A lot, a lot of the time, it may take years. By accident, by accident you walk past, you overheard something. It will take you many years to get rid of it from your heart. And then this thing that then happens that you have a bad opinion of somebody. And then you have to go and get to know that person, and try to you know, find a good excuse and so forth, and try to get to know him. You waste a lot of time trying to remove this from your heart. Very difficult. <laughs> he should purify his heart. How do we purify a heart? But more importantly, why is the heart so important in Islam? Why is the heart important? Because, as we know, the Hadith Sahih, which is the place that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala He looks upon. إن الله لا ينظر إلى سوالكم ولا إلى إسعادكم ولكن ينظر إلى قلوبكم. الله سبحانه وتعالى لا يبقى تقول your body tall, short, Malaysian, Yemeni, Somali. الله عز وجل does not look at these things. These are superficial things. They don't mean anything. Just because your DNA has a certain you know color to it, خلاص means nothing. Allah does not look at this. Not how tall, how short your weight. Allah has always not looked towards this. Allah looks towards your heart. And that's why the heart is important. And any, any tradition, any type of Islam that, that does not talk about the heart, there's something wrong. Because this is, the, this is what Allah looks upon. The heart is important. And this is part of nowadays, modern Muslim thinkers now, they don't talk about the heart. They talk about everything else, politics. This and that, and all these other things. طيب. Allah Azza wa Jalla has said in the Hadith of Sahih, Allah looks towards the heart. Shouldn't we, shouldn't you and I have concern with our hearts? Yes. Because why? Because Allah Azza wa Jalla, that's what He's looking at. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala looking at our hearts constantly. What does Allah see in your heart and my heart? What's in the, what's in the heart? Is there something nice? <laughs> Or if the person next to you, uh, the person next to you, if he was to see what's in your heart, and the jealousy, the anger, uh, the diseases that you have, showing off, all these things, the love for the world. Yeah. Are you comfortable? The Ulama say that a person of tasawwuf, a murid, is not a murid until he can safely put his heart if you could, on a plate and show it to the people in the marketplace. If you can't do that, you're not, you're not, you're not there yet. How many people have, have a problem with that issues? Why are you sitting like this? Why are you talking to him? Why she's like this? And why am I like this? Because he's in the heart. <clears throat> Which is the place Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks for. What do we purify our hearts from? From the dunya, shahawat, worldly desires. Like what? Having more dunya than what you need. Having you know, things more than what you need. Spite, rancor, deceitfulness, all thinking ill of any Muslim. Spite, hasad, rancor, hit, deceitfulness. Uh, jealousy, in other words, in other words. <coughs> he must be of good advice to them. Uh, to who? To the Muslims. Compassionate. You have to have compassion in your religion. Nowadays you get people, they become religious and they don't have any compassion in their hearts. They become rigid, they become harsh. They start becoming, yani, the more religious they have, yani, the more religious in, uh, more religion in their lives, the more strict they become. Everything's haram, 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 haram. And 
Before they were practicing, they were doing haram. Now they're telling everybody, you're haram, you're haram, you're haram. A tr the true religion, a, a tradition that's connected to the Prophet so, 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 so. has compassion. If it doesn't, if it doesn't, then you need to change, change your teacher. If your teacher is not teaching you to have compassion in your heart towards the Muslims and the Kuffar, then you change the teacher. Leave the teacher. It's no good. Why? Because our teacher sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us this. And if a teacher is not teaching you what the Prophet is teaching you, la khayfi, he can tell you all the ayat of Qur'an, he can sing the Qur'an, and he can do whatever he wants. But if he's not giving you compassion, rahmah, to Muslims and to non-Muslims, and when you read the seerah of the Prophet it's all compassion. Except in certain situations <clears throat> where compassion calls him to do something else. Out of compassion. But everything's compassion. Compassion is one man. Compassion for the kuffar. The Prophet sallallahu is a rahmatan bil alameen. Is a mercy to, the, to both worlds. But how is the Prophet a mercy to people who are not Muslim? Those who, who refuse to believe in the religion of Islam, for example. Who, uh, who go against you fight, that is Allah. The Prophet is a mercy because the punishment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has previously sent down on previous civilizations uh, in the presence of the Prophet, these calamities, these, uh, the destruction doesn't come down. So that's why the Prophet is a rahmah for those who are against us. The Prophet is a rahmah to them. Because previous Prophets, punishment came down. While, while the Prophet was there. Obviously the Prophet was a mic. <coughs> so he must, think, he must be of good advice to your brother. Compassionate and merciful. He must think well of them all. This is very difficult to do sometimes. Having a good opinion of every Muslim. Very difficult. Desiring for them whatever good he desires for himself. Uh, you, want, you want for your brother what you want for yourself. And disliking for them whatever evil he dislikes for himself. If you want bad to come to the if somebody, a person, something bad happens to him and you get happy, there's something wrong with you. There's something wrong with you. No disciple, but the heart commits sins. The heart commits sins which are uglier and fouler and more offensive than those committed by the senses. By your hands, by your feet. The heart, what the heart commits of sins is worse than any sin that the hand and the feet can do. A heart remains unfit for the for the ma'rifah. A ma'rifah, if you remember, ma'rifah is to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A heart is unfit to have gnosis, ma'rifah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and for his love to descend into it until he rids himself of his disease. You have jealousy in your heart, you show off in your acts of worship, you do your worship for the sake of Allah, but your heart isn't ready to know Allah. How many your heart does not know Allah, yet it prays to Allah, it is hajj, it fasts, it prays in the front line, it may even lead the prayer, for example. The heart, the heart is still does not know Allah. Not know Allah. <coughs> Yes, that verse of the Kaf can be taken to mean Murid. Uh, yes. uh, so, amongst the worst sins of the heart are Kibir, uh, Riyya, and Hasid. Kibir is arrogance, and Riyya is showing off or ostentation. And Hasid is resentful envy. Hasid. He's going to explain these three diseases yeah, in detail. He picks these three, and he says these three diseases are the main diseases of the heart that we're going to focus on. Many diseases, however, these three are the main three. So what is arrogance? Arrogance is proof of great foolishness. If you have arrogance, uh, this shows that you are, you are a fool. You are someone who's stupid. Excessive ignorance, subhanAllah and stupidity. A person who has arrogance is a stupid person. Arrogance does not become one 
they know that he was made from a drop of semen and soon will end up de as a decaying, a decaying corpse. Arrogance is to feel or to believe in your heart, I'm better than him. I'm better than him. I'm better than him then because I know more. I'm better than him because I know what, this, what these words mean. I'm better than him because I'm wearing a hat, for example. I'm better than him because I have a beard. I'm better than him because whatever else you can think of. Or whatever, whatever else shaitan decides to tell you. <coughs> if you think about this, what right do you have to look down on anybody else? When you, the person looking down on people, you, you were created from a drop of semen, of sperm. Mm. So you came from. And you came out from the private parts of somebody else. The same place where your mind comes out. That's where you came out. And your, your origin is a drop of liquid. Of, huh? That if, if somebody was to have it on their pants, on their, on their clothes, they would change their clothes. <laughs> That's where you came from. So how can you look down on somebody else? What right did you have to look down on somebody else? <laughs> and then they say, and your end is going to be a, in, a, in a grave. Your body will be decaying, rotten, smelling. Food for the worms. So this is your beginning, this is your end. And in between, yeah, what are you? Who are you? You're carrying foulness in your stomachs. You're carrying feces and urine in your stomach. Oh, you who's looking down and everybody else. Okay. That's how Shaitan had his plan. Okay. Okay. Trick people to think that there's something. As we can see. Imam al Ghazali is very clever at doing this. Everything I mentioned is from Imam al Ghazali's works. Imam al Ghazali. These examples. Very good. Taqwa. You have taqwa, you have something there to be happy about. Yeah, taqwa is fear of Allah or having consciousness of Allah. That's taqwa. taqwa. You don't have that, khalas. It's no matter what you have. Tayyip. <clears throat> if, if he possesses virtues, you possess something good. Maybe, maybe you're practicing something good. You have a good quality. And good qualities. Know that these are gracious gifts from Allah. Allah has given you a good wife, a gift from Allah. Allah has given you health, a gift from Allah. Allah has given you intelligence, a gift from Allah. Allah has given you good parents, a gift from Allah. Allah has given you a good understanding of the religion, a gift from Allah. Allah has given you a position of authority amongst people to help people, a gift from Allah. Everything you have, everything you have, is from Allah. So how can you then show off and feel yourself better when the, when the things that you're using for the down of people, they're given to you. Not yours, they're given to you. Like somebody who hires out a car, very expensive, Bentley. What? Ask the Martin. And he goes around thinking, well, he's showing off. Things are better than anybody else. And then what happens? The next day, he going to take it back to the Shakar showroom, why is that his? We're gonna say, eh, what we're, gonna, we're gonna laugh at him, yes? We're gonna laugh at him, like some people now are laughing at this example. This man's stupid. Oh, he's showing off for his. And the next day, everybody laughs at him. You know, that car you had yesterday, you don't have it anymore, because it's not yours. Well, the same thing here. You are having arrogance, thinking yourself better than everybody else, with gifts that Allah gave you, not yours. And Allah can take these things off you at any time. Be careful. Be careful. <coughs> a person can achieve nothing by his own power. There's no power, no strength, except by Allah, the Great, Almighty. Neither can he acquire anything through his own strength or cleverness. Your PhD, are you trying to get, get or your degree? You can't get this through your own cleverness. How do I get it? I get it through Allah giving me tawfiq, Allah giving me success. Allah Azza wa is the one that's going to give me 
It was Allah Azza wa Jalla, the one who remind me of the right, right answers. I worked hard, I revised, but Allah is the one who's going to make me remember. That's why sometimes, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah Azza wa Jalla will make you forget the, right, the answers, the questions, and you're oh, what's the answer? I know, I remember, look at it. And you're thinking, ah, oh, what's the answer? Allah has taken it away from you. Why to teach you? You're weak. I can take it any time from you. And I can give it to you any time. And at that moment in time, you have to say, there's no power, no strength except Allah. Ya Allah, help me. This happens. And many of us have had this probably experience where exams, we forget the answer. You're weak. You're weak. From time to time, to time. <coughs> when he behaves with arrogance towards the servants of Allah, employing the gifts that Allah has given him, uh, does he not fear that by behaving discourteously in a bad way and attributing to himself what belongs to Allah, he would or he would take away everything from him? You're showing off with things that Allah has given you. Don't you fear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take away these gifts? Your handsomeness, for example, Allah can take it away from you. The, the presence of ostentation, this is a second disease. Ostentation is riyah. Riyah, showing off. Doing something for other than the sake of Allah. Why do you pray? For Allah. But if our prayer is different, because there's a lot of people there, they will do it for the sake of Allah. Showing off. Like the man, he was praying by himself, and the door opened. He had something come in. He started praying longer, making his prayer nice. Uh, at, the end, at the end of his prayer, he made a long dua, mashallah. Why are some of these coming in now? He must impress the person. <laughs> and then what happens as he gets up, mashallah, very pious, walking towards the door, and he has to look. He was, he was there, he looks, he was a goat. Snuck in to get away from the heat. <laughs> I came in. I was like, yeah, yeah. I was trying to impress a goat. Yeah. What's a goat going to do for you? How many people do this? We're laughing about how many people do that. How many people? Uh, you're sitting there, and there's nobody in the mosque, you're sitting very quick. Yeah. And there's, there's people there, you're sitting very long. Uh, praying by yourself? At home, Fajr or Isha, very quick. Yeah. But if there's somebody in the mosque, they tap you, <coughs> and they're going to pray behind you, or oh, it's not very long now, taking time. What's the difference? You're doing it for the person, you're doing it for Allah. We have to check ourselves, always check, check, check. How many people there? One man who used to pray in the, in, the, in the front line for 20 years, one day he came late to Salah, and he felt embarrassed to Allah. What are people going to say about me? I didn't pray today. People are going to start talking about me. Oh, so and so, he didn't pray. He was late today. And what happened? He realized, oh, it's people. I didn't, I'm worried more about the people than Allah. And he said to himself, those 20 years of salah, I was praying in the front line, it wasn't for Allah, it was for the people. What did he do? He did Allah. He made up the 20 years of prayer. It worked. It wasn't for Allah. Why do I, why am I bothered what people think? It means nothing what people think. Allah Azza wa Jalla. Yet how many people? How many people's part? Even in da'wah. In da'wah, very important. Ariyah. How many people showing off in their speeches, in their talks, in their classes? People showing off. One person comes, for example, his class of, uh, Fifteen people come to his class, his class is different. Oh, the camera now. The camera is teaching, the camera is showing him now. Uh, is, it, is this class the same or is it different? It should be the same thing. Camera or no camera, the class should be the same. What's the difference? Whether one person or the camera or 10,000 people or 3,000 people or the whole of creation, it doesn't matter. Why? Because we're not worshipping creation. We're worshipping Allah, the Creator. It's relevant. Very, very important. Like, the proof or the presence of us, of ostentation, riyah, 
is proof that the heart is empty of the greatness of Allah. Allah Azzawajal is not great in your heart. He has no awam in your heart. Why? Because you, you want the approval of people. You want to impress people. But impress Allah Azzawajal. What? You want to impress the people? What are they going to do for you? People. And they're going to take you to heaven. And they're going to reward you. And you're going to take you to hell. They can't do anything to people. However, Allah Azzawajal, He's the one you're trying to impress. He seeks the approval of creatures through showing off and is not content with the knowledge that Allah Azza wa is looking on them. But one who does good deeds and likes people to know that he's doing something good so that people can respect him is a hypocrite, what if? Ignorant hypocrite. But why? Because all he wants is the dunya. All he wants and there was a famous shaykh, Imam Haddad, Imam Haddad himself. A man came to him, I think I've told you this before. A man came to him and said, I want to build, I want to build a mosque. This is maybe 500 years ago. And the man was very wealthy. And Imam Haddad said to him, what would you think if I, if we took the money, and we built the mosque. But then people start to say that the ones who built it wasn't you, it was somebody else. And then the person who people were, were mistakenly believed that he was the one that gave the money, he himself said, Yes, yes, it was me that gave the money. And Imam Haddad said, How would you feel if all that praise? went to somebody else. Even though the young one, the young one had given me. The man said, oh, I'd be very angry. I'd get a shout. I'd try to get up and tell people that, tell people that this one's an imposter. And you remember Haddad said to him, take the money back. I'm not going to help you. He said, why? He was, you're not sincere. Who cares? You're doing it for people or you're doing it for Allah? It doesn't matter. Allah knows. And that's why Sometimes certain people they'll ruin their good deeds by thinking more of the people more than thinking of Allah. And Imam Haddad, or Imam Ghazali, is here as a whole section. He gives many examples that people do of doing acts of worship for Allah. He gives an example. He says that there may be a man who wants to get married, and what he'll do, he wants to impress the father of the girl. So then he'll start, and if the father of the girl may be oh, you know, praying, go to the mosque. So he'll then start going to the mosque, trying to pray in the mosque often to impress the father. And remember, and Azali said, this is coming off. Why? If the father wasn't there, would you go and pray? No, I wouldn't. Yes. He prayed for Allah, he prayed for the, for the father. Many examples. Or people give him da'wah. And when, if there's sisters, if there are women there, I'm not sure his class is different, he's always I. He revised more. And if there's no women in the class, or he dressed nice in a certain way, it's a why. There was a man who, true story, there was a man who came to a Sha'arani, a famous scholar in the past from Egypt. <coughs> and he said to him, Sha'arani, said to this man, this man was a businessman, he said to him that, uh, if you want to remove this disease of showing up, of doing things for Allah, Allah, you have to spend time with the people of Allah. Oh, yeah. You have to spend time with the people who are close to Allah. And he said, he said no, 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 I'm going I'm I'm to be able to do this. I'll be able to be sincere. And he said, he goes, I give out a lot of money, yeah, charity, but I'll make sure that I'll, I'll be sincere. I'm not doing that for people. Uh, so he wanted to test him. The Sheikh wanted to test him to see if he's able. And the Sheikh said to him, You won't remove this disease from your heart until you spend time with the people who've cleaned the hearts. You by yourself, you won't be able to do it. 
<coughs> you know that faster. One night he came and he, he told somebody to go to this man, with this man, and tell him that in this village over here, there's some poor, there's some poor in the village over here, and he needs money. And in one story they say to that, that actually they sent a, the sheikh sent a man to him, to this businessman to test him. This man came and said, you know, I'm poor, I have no money, could you please give me something? And the businessman gave him something. The next day, the sheikh saw him, and the sheikh said, man, mashallah, anything happened yet? But how are you? Nobody comes to anything like this. No, 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 no. Nobody came to me. Why? Because he, he's trying to hide it. He doesn't want to tell anybody that what he's done. So the Sheikh sent the same man again the next day. The man came the next day. So I went to the, went to the, went to the rich man and said, Oh, I need some money. Could you please help me? Help me. And uh, then the, this man gave him the money. And the Sheikh again saw the man the next day. This rich man said, oh, How's everything? Oh, you know, alhamdulillah, you know, But really, the people. Subhanallah, they're very poor. They're very poor. Ah, see? And they started to shake him. So the Shaykh then sent the man again, a different man. He came back the next day. And asked the first money to give him. The Shaykh the next day saw the man, this businessman. Ah, how are you? Oh, subhanAllah. You know, the, the, the rich people, if it wasn't for the rich people in this city, uh, the poor would have nothing. He's now a Slowly, slowly. The Sheikh sent another man. So I asked the man for money. And the man rich, gave him money again. The Sheikh saw him the next day. Ah, how's everything? Go, oh, subhanAllah. You know, people have come to me you know, and you know, asked me for money and I, I gave it to them. And the only reason why I'm telling you this is because you know, let you know, you're the Sheikh, and then you know these people are here poor. The Sheikh, uh, what happened to you? You say that you can hide your good deeds without telling anybody. Why are you telling me? But no, 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 no. And the Sheikh said, Look, your nefs didn't allow you to keep this quiet. Your nefs want someone to know that it's doing something good. Your nefs would not allow you. And I told you that you want to remove this disease of showing off, of doing things, so that people can give you praise. You can't remove it until you spend time with the people's heart to clean. And the man said, I'm with you. you. Another story. <coughs> there was a man who fasted continuously, always fasting. Three years of fasting all the time. And there was a shaitan who wanted to, 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 to take away something from his, from his reward. So this shaitan disguised himself as a man selling me. Afan, the man who was fasting for three years, he, was, he used to sell meat. He used to sell meat. So a shepherd came and disguised himself as a man. I went to the man. I said to the man, uh, give me some meat. So the man, who was a butcher, who was fasting for three days, weighed the meat. And the, the man who pretended to be the shepherd said, give me more, I'm fasting. I'm fasting, give me more. So he put a bit more. He goes, ah, put more. I'm fasting, I'm hungry. Can you give me a bit more? He was ah, more, joy, I'm hungry, I'm fasting. The man got angry, he was, he was, nah, you I've been fasting three years. <laughs> ah, are you here when you're fasting one day? And then the man, ah, I'm the shepherd. And all I wanted to do is to make you say that you've been fasting. Why? Because nobody knew. Be quiet. And I want to take away, I want to do lesson your rewards for the last one. That's the only thing I could do. Anyway, there's a reward, There was a man, he was reading a book, a night so far, reading. And in this town, this just happened also in Yemen. In Ramadan, there would be a man who, before Fajr, would go and wake people up, support, 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 have a party, and in Yemen they have the same thing. That, um, this man was reading the middle night with the Quran, and then when he heard the man, yeah. and he started to make his voice more beautiful. 
And then when the man went, he listened to his voice. Why so the man could hear him? That night he had a, he had a dream on Yom Qiyamah that he, that he saw his good deeds, he saw the Surah Surah Taha that he was reading, and he saw it. It was all full of light, Noor. Ajr, Ajr, Ajr. But in certain verses of the Quran, Sultaha, there was no Ajr, blank. Light, 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 blank. So we asked, how come all the Surah, I'm getting Ajr, I'm getting the Lord, there's light, Noor. But these verses, nothing there. And the angel told him, because he read those verses, when that man walked past, you increased your voice for him. Before that, everything was for Allah. That's we have no reward. If you dig deep in yourself, you'll be surprised in this chapter of doing things for the sake of Allah. Also, people will say, uh, they'll do the web the other way. They stop doing something because of people. They stop doing something because of people. So they won't do something good, they won't do it. Or oh, I don't want people to talk about that. They won't, they won't go to the mosque. Or they won't go to the class. Or you won't do something good that people are told to do. Why well, are people most people start talking about me and kind of you know, or sometimes they'll say, I don't want people to think I'm a good Muslim. I'm, I'm, no yeah. I'm a very bad Muslim. That's also showing up. Doing something for the sake of Allah and leaving some time for the sake of Allah, both wrong with that. Allah inshallah next class. The problem, the problem is not with you, the problem is with the man after that question. Why do you want to know? <laughs> Why? What's the benefit of knowing? What's the reason? If someone asks you to question, you want to know me or you? You have each situation has to be looked at separately and you have to look at the person and ask them. But when I talk about it, they say, uh, Imam Al Ghazali talks about it, it's his hand for all the Kalam. He used to talk, asking things you don't have to ask him. <coughs> if the person is knowledgeable, respectable, you will tell them. If someone is not then you don't need to know. But be wise. Say inshallah. <coughs> Nothing else? Next week we'll go back to our year on the 7th of the